If you've ever had a kidney stone, chances are that you've had a stent at some point. But are stents really necessary? And what can be done to manage the awful discomfort if you do end up with a stent? If you'd like answers to these questions and more, stick around for this video. Hi, I'm Joey Weichman, and welcome to Stone Relief. Today's topic of conversation, we're talking about ureteral stents. And this is a hot topic of conversation in the kidney stone community because kidney stones are awful enough as they are, but when you add in a stent, the level of discomfort and misery that people experience uh, achieves new levels. So today's purpose of video is to introduce you to what a stent is if you've never had one before or it's the first time that you've formed a kidney stone. We'll be talking about when they're actually should be used per the American Urological Association. We'll talk about what it feels like to have a stent in and we'll also talk about some things about managing stent discomfort. But first, let's establish what a stent is so that we can fit all the pieces together to understand what we can do to help manage our comfort if we're so unlucky to end up with a stent when we have a kidney stone. So a stent at, a base, at the baseline is a long, thin plastic tube that's usually, again, it's made out of plastic or maybe it's silicone, depends upon the application, but generally these are gonna be inserted into your urinary tract, through your urethra, in your bladder, up through and into the kidney, and it's gonna cause a whole host of complications but they do serve a purpose at times. So the main purpose is to drain urine from the kidney. So whenever urine backs up into the kidney due to an obstruction, and in this instance, it's a kidney stone, this is where we have elevated levels of hydronephrosis, which is a grade of the urine expansion into the kidney and also the ureter itself, that then associates itself with pain. The more urine that's backing up into your kidney, the more pain or renal colic that you're going to experience with your kidney stone. So they put a stent in place to be able to drain the urine from the kidney down through the bladder into the urethra and out through, I'm sorry, out through your urethra to manage this. So this makes pain while you have a kidney stone, if you're experiencing severe pain, a little bit more manageable because lower levels of hydronephrosis mean lower levels of pain. Now, in most instances, Stents are used for a duration of around three to seven days. However, if you have a surgery on the horizon and your urologist has inappropriately recommended or placed a stent, it could be longer than this. I've chatted with people from all across the world who have gone weeks or months with a stent in place waiting for surgery. And we're gonna talk about that in the next chapter about why that's inappropriate. But nevertheless, normally, you're looking at about three to seven days. The other application for where a ureteral stent can be used with a kidney stone is after you've passed the stone and it is going to assist with healing. So that stent is going to carry a majority of the urine from your kidney down to your bladder and out through your urethra, allowing any area that may have been damaged by a kidney stone more time to heal. Because if there's urine constantly passing over or present through your urinary tract, healing is going to be tremendously slowed down, if not delayed entirely. So placing a stent for that capacity, as we'll talk about in this next chapter, is a useful application of this particular medical device. Okay, now that we know a little bit about what a stent is, let's talk about when they should actually be used. Because based on conversations that I've had with people across the world, and also research data that's been collected on stent use, there are a whole ton of urologists and doctors who are inappropriately using this medical device and causing a lot of patients discomfort when it shouldn't be used in the first place. So let's talk about the exact situations for when you'd want to have a stent and when you would not want to have a stent. And just for reference, this is not Joey says or Joey data. This is actually straight out of the American Urological Handbook that is given to urologists and doctors for guides on urinary tract ailments such as kidney stones. So first, Per, like intended use of a stent really is in the presence of infection. So again, when we're dealing with a blockage that is keeping urine in the kidney, not only does urine in the kidney precipitate kidney stones, but it can also breed infection. And infection in the kidney is a huge deal. Not only could it lead to kidney death, but also could lead to sepsis, which could lead to your death as well and its entirety. Like it is a very, very serious issue. So clearing any kind of stagnant, urine when you have a kidney stone is exceptionally important. And you'll know that there's not urine moving 
when you have extremely high levels of hydronephrosis and your pain is a nine or a 10 out of 10, like extreme stream levels. That means no urine's moving and it needs to get released. Now, most of the time this happens on its own, if it doesn't happen over the course of a 24 or 48 hour period and you're in immense pain, this is where a stent can come in handy. In addition to that, in the presence of affection. Now, prior to scheduled surgery, it can also be used to relieve pain. As we talked about, lower levels of hydronephrosis equal lower levels of pain. And it can also be used to increase urine flow, again, which is an important factor. This not only helps with pain, but keeping urine flowing while you have a kidney stone, especially while the stone is still in the kidney, can help minimize risk of stone growth because there's still gonna be these lithogenic factors floating around your urine. That still could contribute to that stone growing. So if you're not passing urine frequently due to the stone, that stone could grow. So having a stent in there to keep that flowing is a very, very positive thing. Lastly, I just want to note on this with regards to things happening prior to surgery. There are many, many urologists and doctors who inappropriately place stents prior to surgery to increase stone free rate, that is SFR. Now, stone free rate is the rate at which or percentage success rate that stones and stone fragments pass you know, without any kind of implication. So this is prior to surgery. So they're trying to dilate your urinary tract or expand that urinary tract to allow the stone to be able to pass through there. However, <laughs> this doesn't work. The, the concept sounds great in theory. However, in actual practice, stents actually stop the progress of your kidney stone. So they place it to try to get your stone to pass, but actually what they're doing is they're just locking you into having a surgical procedure at some point in time down the road because that stent is going to stop that stone from passing naturally. Period. Full stop. If your urologist recommends this prior to surgery, gotta ask questions and challenge them on it. Doesn't mean that they're wrong, but ask questions, be empowered, educate yourself on your own health, and do not blindly accept their recommendations. This could lead you to a world of hurt and pain. Don't accept it if it doesn't make sense. Next, post-surgery. The only application of a stent post-surgery per the American Urological Association should occur if the following items are true. Not all of them, one of them just can be true for this to be true for a stent to be used. So, for a stent to be used after surgery, you've got injury to the ureter, which makes sense. Placing a stent can help with healing. Got it. Abnormal narrowing in the ureter or, and anatomical impediments. So this can be anything from that narrowing or a janky turn that happens in your urinary tract due to some unknown development issue. There are just a number of things that can occur uh, that could precipitate the use of this because your urinary tract is not going to be able to deal with any stone fragments passing after your procedure. This is pretty rare. Most people are going to pass this, so this is a rare type of instance. Next, renal function impairment. So when you have a kidney stone, inevitably your GFR is going to be lower, and this is a rating of how well your kidney is processing waste from your blood, turning it into urine, and passing it out of your body. So if it is impaired due to that kidney stone, they may use a stent to be able to keep things flowing. Next, if you have a second ureteroscopy planned in the future, they may keep a stent in there just to be able to keep you comfortable. So time between procedures is generally pretty quick turnaround, a week or two, but sometimes due to complications, it could be longer. So again, having something in there to help mitigate urine back up into the kidney to reduce pain is oftentimes why they will use this to keep you as comfortable as possible while you're waiting for that next procedure. Now, again, as I had noted before with regards to prior to schedule use of stents. Same thing is true when you're talking with your doctor about what's happening after your surgery. And this happens before the surgery happens, not after, because they're gonna just place that after your surgery and you're gonna wake up with a stent. So have this conversation early. Ask them, hey, after my surgery, do you anticipate me needing a stent? And if their answer is yes, you should I have a question with them. And if it happens that they've placed a stent afterwards and none of these are true, it's time to start asking some serious questions of your doctor or your urologist. Just a reminder, this information is available in written form on our website. Find the link below in the description. All right, so now that we know what a stent is and when they should and shouldn't be used, let's talk about what it's like to actually have one if you are unfortunate enough 
to be one of the few that it requires or is medically required to have to be able to make sure that you're as comfortable as possible. So, as we had mentioned previously, this is a piece of plastic or silicone tubing that is going to be inserted into your urinary tract. It's not really pleasant. It's a kind of an exit only type of situation and we're going up the wrong way. <laughs> so, not fun. So, in order to help manage that for you, a couple things that they're gonna offer. You can either do general or local anesthesia, and for those of you out there who are highly anxious about any kind of medical procedure, they also offer sedation. But again, these, all these things come with their own complications and uh, things that just pile on top of a kidney stone and a stent and you name it. But just know there are some things to help you manage this if needed. Next, burning urination. You're going to experience this for about a good three days. And it probably could continue all the way throughout the time that you have a stent in place. Hopefully it's only three to seven days. If it's a longer period of time, you may be bracing for this. And this can range anywhere from a mild annoyance where it's just kind of a tickle to you feel like you're literally peeing razor blades and it's just uh, living hell. So very, very wide range here. Hopefully you fall somewhere on the lower end of things, but this is something that is pretty much in place for most people when you first get this inserted. Next, after those three day periods, what are some of the things that you're gonna encounter? Biggest ones, bladder spasms. Now, again, we talked about this being a foreign object on top of a foreign object that's already in your urinary tract and your body isn't happy. So it is going to use your bladder to spasm, to really, it's kind of like trying to force urine and pull it down through your urinary tract and get it out of your body because it says, well, if I do this enough, I could probably get this thing out of the system and we'll be okay. Everything will return back to normal. However, stents are designed to stay in place and this action by your body doesn't work. So you'll feel these bladder spasms. There might be a little bit of pain associated with it and you're definitely gonna be sore after the stent is removed because your body has exhausted itself to the point of being in pain. Uh, so this is something that you're gonna have to deal with and then when the stent is removed, you're gonna feel sore. Next, that frequent burning urination, it's gonna be persistent for most people. Some of you may not experience it, but for most, it will be there. Ureteral reflux, pretty benign name on the surface, but actually what it is is pretty awful. So this is an instance where urine actually goes back up the stent and into your kidney. It, so having two channels of exit, stent and your actual urinary tract, the ureter itself, creates kind of like a feedback loop in an instance and there's a little bit of a vacuum action that's occurring that can again force urine back up into the kidney and it is incredibly uncomfortable. Um, it will eventually resolve itself but it is a persistent issue. It's something that you should probably chat with your urologist about, make mention. It might be something that they can do for you. Flank and abdominal pain, kind of like a full bladder feeling. Uh, this will definitely be present again because your body is trying to get rid of that foreign object. So bladder spasms, you're going to have increased urine production because your body's trying to rid itself, rinse itself clean of that foreign object. So you're going to have some abdominal pain. It's going to feel like a full bladder. Maybe have some pain along your sides, but just expect this as normal. Lastly, blood and urine. So not only is there a little bit of friction that's occurring between that plastic sheath or uh, the, the stent itself and your urinary tract and your, your, your reader wall, but there's also just going to be blood present because you have a kidney stone. Kidney stones rub it up against that soft tissue in your urinary tract. There's going to be blood. A little bit of blood, no problem. A lot of blood, probably time to call your medical professional and see what's going on. And lastly, just want to just, I don't mean to break anybody's bubbles, but if you have a stent, chances are you're going to be dealing with some discomfort. Um, so brace yourself. It's there for a reason. And what we're going to talk about in the next chapter is how you can best manage that discomfort while you do have a stent. All right, so we finally arrived at probably the chapter for why you clicked on this video in the first place. So let's talk about what we can do to manage discomfort while we have a stent. So the first thing that we're going to tackle is going to be the burning urination because this is by far the most... Uh, persistent complaint that we hear that lasts the longest duration. So it's the one that we're going to tackle first. So when it comes to burning urination, you know, we're really talking about there's just this, uh, you know, process that's occurring. Your body is trying to get rid of this foreign object uh, and it's creating a significant amount of 
really kind of inflammation that you're going to feel as this burning sensation. If you think about your body's ability to deal with inflammation and irritants and things like that, like a glass of water. So if you imagine a glass of water and the level of water in the glass is your body's ability to tolerate those irritants and inflammation, when you've got a kidney stone, you're already kind of operating near the top of that glass. It's almost ready to spill over. And when you add in things uh, like these irritants, like we're talking about here, like caffeine and sugar and alcohol and acidic drinks, we start to spill over and we start to have some physical manifestations of these inflammation and irritants. These, that burning sensation that we feel is that physical manifestation of our body's ability to manage that spilling over. So when you got a kidney stone, you're already kind of at the top level. Don't add in things like this and you'll do yourself a massive favor in managing discomfort when it comes to burning urination. The other thing that you can do to keep yourself nice and <laughs> comfortable while you're managing this stent discomfort is consistent and even hydration. Most people roller coaster hydrate. What I mean by that is they drink a bunch of water and then they don't drink any water for an extended period of time. And this forces a greater quantity of water through a system that's already kind of hobbled due to this kidney stone. And this can cause increased, you know, just discomfort and irritation and burning sensations, a whole host of things. So if you even things out by drinking eight to 12 ounces of water consistently every hour while you're awake, your body will remain hydrated. You'll be passing urine at a nice consistent rate. You're not overtaxing your system and it will reduce irritation that you experience. The next thing that we're going to take a look at is bladder spasm. So as we've talked about previously, your body recognizes not only that kidney stone, but also the stent as a foreign object and it wants to get rid of it. So your bladder is going to spasm to try to force that object out, but that's not going to happen. So how do we stop the body from taking these actions to try to get rid of this foreign object, which is the stent. So one of the things that's been pretty highly researched is the use of alpha blockers. And these are things like Tamsulosin and Flomax. And we've talked about these in previous videos. These are medical expulsive therapies that are used also to try to help stones pass spontaneously prior to any kind of surgery that's being scheduled. So there's a lot of it, a lot of data on these two, and they've actually been shown to relax the smooth muscle tissue, which can help cut down on your bladder spasms. Now, you've landed on this page for a reason, you're probably looking for some more naturopathic uh, options versus the pharmaceutical route, which is what this is. This is a pharmaceutical, synthetically derived product. If you're looking for more natural routes, you're looking for a classification called antispasmodics. And these are gonna be things like horsetail, chamomile, and marshmallow root. These are some of the ones that have got the most data uh, that has been studied when producing inflammation and irritation and also being an antispasmodic. So check those out. They're available in tea and capsule form if you're experiencing these bladder spasms. And then lastly, we're gonna talk about pain. So as with anything, that irritation can sometimes elevate, become pain. Our bodies all manage these processes a little bit different and our tolerance levels will widely vary between individuals. So if you're experiencing any pain or any type of discomfort, one of the things that can help is an NSAID like Advil or ibuprofen. And again, we've talked about NSAIDs in previous videos. You don't want to overuse these things. These are a stopgap for, I have an elevated peak of pain or discomfort and I need to get over it. You can use that to bridge that gap. Do not take them consistently um, for any duration of time, really longer than a day or two, because they can cause damage, temporary damage to the kidney, which can really screw up the process of you trying to pass this kidney stone. So use these with caution. If you're looking for a natural route, again, which is why we're here, we recommend the use of Chanca Piedra, uh, or Chanca Piedra, however you want to say it. This is an excellent natural pain reliever and has incredible anti-inflammatory and anti-spasmodic properties as well. So it's kind of like a twofer here. Really, really want to check this out. Available in uh, multiple different formats and it's also a part of the product that we use. So super, super helpful for people who are dealing with stent discomfort and are looking for a natural option. Visit our website if you'd like to join a community of people learning to manage their kidney stones naturally. See you in the next video.